All right, here, here is the top eight list, all the finalists here on the Reddit page. You can click on the Reddit link up here, or you can type this in and it will bring you to the Reddit, or you can just find it on Reddit slash R slash Rogue Deck Builder and bring up the, the top eight finalists and I'll be going through these one by one here on this video the first one here comes from submission number 35 by Milo Z this is modern snakes I actually played against this deck on MTGO and was very impressed and I made him submit it and send me the deck list because I really really like this deck so let's just click on it here let's bring it up here and I'll show you exactly what it is uh, so here is his modern deck. So you see, he would make some changes if he had the certain cards. I, I don't have the updated list. I think he did send me the updated list. I just did not submit it here. But this is the actual deck list that I played against. He starts off, everything in here is a snake, except for the Teferi, Mage of Zalfir. And basically, Teferi is really good because it gives all your cards flash and makes your opponents only be able to cast up as sorceries. So it gives all of your, your different snakies flash ability and so we'll start off with the coinling oracle it's the best snake in the deck probably because it either ramps or replaces itself and then we have the mystic snake that of course is a very fun card as you can counter spell and put a snake into play and the and then the viper uh you get to put two blue one snake creature tokens into play and a two one snake here as well so it adds your snake count by three and of course, Secure Tribe Builder, very, very good snake. You can sack it to go find a basic land, so it helps you fix your lands to find that blue source. And then we have the Secure Tribe Scout, which helps you ramp as well. Another snake, though. It's just a, Usually, it's just a 1-1 one, one for 1, and it, it ups your snake count. And then Seshura the Anointed. This one's really cool. He's one of your finishers. He makes all your snakes plus 2 plus 2 and gives them all curiosity. So very powerful card. So you basically try to stabilize until you get a Seshiro out, and there you go. You get to start getting crazy card advantage and big snakes. And I've already explained Teferi, and the Vesuvian Shapeshifter basically just comes in as a copy of whatever you need to. So, of course, it won't copy your legendary creature, but you can copy any one of these other, other snakes. Or it can copy, let's see if it can copy, uh, yeah, another creature in play. So you can actually copy your problematic cards by your opponent. Uh, this... Okina, the Temple of the Grandfathers, is good with your legendary guy. It can make him uh, get plus one, plus one until the turn. It basically doesn't hurt you at all. It has no negative downsides to it. It is just a forest, basically. And we got the Simic Growth Chamber. We do need to get up to six mana, so it is a very good card in this deck as it can help uh, with your card count. You can this eventually you can get to that six with with less lands. You can only have to you only have to play twenty lands rather than more. It also works very well with like the the Secure a tribe scout, you can put a land into play and still use a land that turn to uh, you can still put a land into play that turn, tap it, and then return it back with the Simith Grow Chamber. So it's pretty good. Let's go on to the artifacts. He's got three coat of arms here. Again, everything snakes, so they get huge. This is one of the kill conditions. And we've got a hatchery here, which also puts snakes into play. It's a pretty cool card. So it comes into play with X charge counters on it, and you put it. You get to put a plus. You get to put a one one green snake token for each charge counter. Uh, so yeah, if you if you spend like six mana, you have three counters on. You can put for five mana. You can put three one one green snake tokens at play every turn. Pretty good. You've got remand is the counter spell as kind of stalls your opponent until you can get your kill condition. And then probably the most powerful card in the deck, the the card that did wreck my deck was the Suzu Suzuki summons. As you put in two snake tokens into play, and then you return it to your hand whenever a non-token snake comes into play. So whenever you cast one of these non-token snakes, you get to put Suzuku summons back in your hand from the graveyard. Very powerful card. Just a, it actually worked a lot better than I thought it would. It did beat my I I believe I was playing my mono black uh, discard deck against this, and he was able to easily take the game with just the amount of card advantage that Suzuku summons was able to get him. Then we've gotten the Cyber Echoing Truth, Nature's Claim, Plax Manta, and da, 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 da. it basically gives your guys uh, hexproof until the turn. And it is not a snake, it is a beast, but 
I don't know exactly the reasoning he'd want to put in Plax Manta, but I'm sure there is a reason. He can protect one of his creatures. Um, then Spreading Seas is really good, of course, in Modern. Relic of Progenitus, of course, is is a natural cyber card and a Teferi Mage of Alpha. So that is a submission by... Let's see what submission this was. This was submission number 35, Modern Snakes by Milo C. This was my first pick. We'll go on now to Borza Proclamations. This is a very fun deck. It works a lot like one of my modern decks that I was musing around with with Immortal Servitude and One Drops. Basically, it's got a bunch of One Drops here with Vexing. Vexing Devil is what this deck really works itself around because Vexing Devil, you play it first turn, they have to pay four life. And then you're going to get it back with Proclamation of Rebirth. Then it's got a, the other good one drops in the format. We've got Figure of Destiny, Goblin Guide, Grim Lava Mancer, and Legion Loyalist. And he's got he's got Dark Confidence in here for card advantage. And eventually you're just going to be casting these these small one drops. And when they get board wiped from like Electrolyzes and Pyroclasms and whatnot, you can get them back later game with Proclamation of Rebirth. And then just a ton of burn here. So he's got the Path to Exile, the Lightning Helix, the Lightning Bolt, Boros Charm, Wars of Charm. These... Pass and the Orzhov Charm are great control, and then the Helix Bolt and Boros Charm can be direct damage. Um, yep, pretty self-explanatory here. Another another uh, hyper-aggressive deck for a modern that I really liked. Very, very creative. We'll go on to number submission number 22 by Zombie Mill by d -Lots. I think that I have... Uh, he did his own video here, so rather than going over here, let's just... Uh, Let's see here. I think I had a deck list for this. Yeah, here we go. Here's the deck list for it. We'll pull up the deck list. So you go go ahead and watch his video here. You can pull it up on the Reddit. But he's got Blood Arts, Butcher Ghouls, Diagraph Captains, Diagraph Ghouls, Us Metal. Uh, there was actually a deck similar to this that just that just uh, four would an MTG online. But it wasn't quite the mill strategy. I mean, this has an alternate win condition. You can just beat them down or you can or you can mill them out within a Valley of Drown Yards and the Undercity Informers. So it does have the alternate win condition here. Very creative to use these. Also, the Undead Alchemist, of course, can mill your opponent out. So we've got the Falconrath, Noble, and Blood Artist that can combo off as well. And we've got these good old Diagraph Captains. So every time a zombie dies, it is going to be doing quite a bit of damage. And I really like this list as well. Check it out. Got the Jace Memory Adept as well. So I, I'm sure that the milling strategy would be the number one way to kill your opponent, but you can also easily kill them by damage here with a three blood artist, blood artist three nobles, and four diagraph captains. So yep, very cool deck. Got got Grim Grim in the maybe board. You could always throw him in. He's a cool zombie, and he can actually you can actually combo off with him by being able. This gives you another sack outlet. I don't really think he's got. Does he have like a Yes, he does. The, the Undercity Informers is Sack Outlet here. Okay, so it seems like it works pretty well. Alrighty, let's go on to the next submission, which is a Wolf Pack by Jared067. I really actually like this deck a lot because it's using a card that I think is very flavorful. Let's see if we'll pull it up here. Tapped out is going very slowly here. Let's get these other ones. Okay, so it's got either the wind conditions as with Biovisionary. So you can clone a bunch of stuff with Biovisionary. Or. The cool thing about this is if you don't have your Bio Visionary, you can just clone your Timber Pack Wolves, and they become huge. So he's a, there are two twos, and then whenever another uh, Timber Whack Wolf comes into play, or it gets plus one, plus one for each other Timber Whack Wolf. So first one's a two two, then a three three, then a four. You know, it works kind of the way the good old, I think it's Relentless Rats. One of the rats works. It gets plus one, plus one for each one with the same name. So it gets huge pretty quickly. And it can also act as just a beatdown. Also, the mayor works very well with the wolf that flips. It gives all wolves plus two, plus two, and these are wolves. So, yep, very cool card. And, of course, the other win condition is, like like I said, the cat and counterparts and clones to Biovisionary and just win that way. So also have the infinite reflection, and that actually has some pretty good synergy with Timberback Wolf. Really like this deck. I thought it was very creative. Had a lot of flavor to it. So let's go on to the next one. Submission number 32 by Alex Horde. This is a very fun deck. I actually played a lot of this uh, at Salt Lake this weekend. Alex is from Salt Lake and we met up and I was able to play against this deck quite a bit. He's able to wreck my Immortal Servitude deck basically every time. And what this deck does is it tries to copy the... 
temporal masteries or just play a bunch through epic experiment. I mean, he he got this combination of increasing vengeance up with temporal mastery a bunch of times. This deck ramps so fast. He he also I had him copy like he copied his ranger's path of increasing vengeance. That is just crazy crazy mana the next turn after after a ranger's path. And so he gets up to insane amounts of mana and then the new his newer version does not have devil's play in it. He did cut those as he does just try to go for a mill strategy. Uh, I can't remember. It's Psychic Spiral, yeah, is his new win condition instead of Devil's Play. So he ramps into a just a ton of mana and then takes a ton of turns. It's what's called all the extra turns. And then Psychic Spirals for the win. It actually worked out very well. The Goblin Electromancers were awesome in this deck as it, it as allows him to get going a lot quicker. And it doesn't look like this deck actually works that well, but it, it really does. It it was able, like anything that's not hyper-aggressive, this deck can easily just go over the top and mill you uh, very fast with the amount of extra turns he's able to take. So really like this deck. Um, I, I promised I would actually do a video on this, but I do need the Temporal Masteries and a few other cards to actually get this deck on MTGO. But I promise once I do have it, I will play a few games. Uh, hopefully before Gate Crash or Dragon's Maze is released on MTGO. So let's go on to the next submission number 26. This one was Controlled Amnesia, another modern deck I really liked. So let's pull this guy up here. This works with Sadistic Sacrament, which I think is a very, very powerful card in modern right now. You search target player's library for up to three cards, exile them, and then, uh, then that player shuffles his or her library. So... And then if you kick it for 10, which is or 7, so it costs 10, which will happen late, late, late game as a, as a kill condition, you get to exile 15 cards, and usually by that time the opponent doesn't have many cards. So it kind of does work like a mill deck, but the cool thing about Sadistic Sacrament is it completely shuts down combo decks. Like Tron, you are one short of getting rid of their Tron combination. Like if you third turn Sadistic Sacrament and then get rid of all of their towers except one, then they have to draw into that one tower. But there's there's... Other ways, I think that this deck, he should use like Ghostly Quarters or something to completely just combo out or to get rid of that combo completely for Tron and just shut them out. Uh, then it's got just a ton of control. you got Surgical Extractions, uh, Dissipate, Mana Lake, Damnation, Thought Seize. Again, I, I don't know. I think like a Raven's Crime or something like that would work out very well in here as you can make them discard a the Surgical Extraction. Let's see. It's a... Yeah... Other than the basic land, so yes, you can target non-basic land. So if they do discard one of their Tron pieces or another non-basic land, you can get rid of all of them with Surgical Extraction. So very, very, very cool. Got the Snapcasters in here for extra card advantage. You can chump block and snap back any one of these cards. He's got Darkness in here for like a fog effect and a few other cards. Soul Manipulation is a pretty cool card because uh, you can counter, counter non-creature spell. Or you can counter a creature spell and return target creature card in your graveyard to your hand. So it works very well with Snapcaster Mages. You get a counter spell, get back a Snapcaster. And of course the Serum Vision is just to filter through the deck. And the Mystical Teachings is really cool because you can go get any card with Flash. So you can go get a Snapcaster Mage or anything with Flashback. But I don't think there's any Flashbacks in this deck. So pretty cool card, pretty cool deck. I really like the creativity of it. I really like someone using Sadistic Sacrament, a card that I have implemented into my Mount of Black control deck because I think it is that powerful in modern. All right, so on to submission number 33. This is another cool deck that is a twist on my Soul Sisters, so of course I had to give it the nod. It is basically the Soul Sisters deck here with good old boros reckoner as a kill condition with this volcano hellion so volcano hellion when it comes into play it deals any amount of damage of your choice uh to target creature the damage can't pre be prevented so of course you volcano hellion into your third turn boros reckoner and you volcano hellion into the your boros reckoner and that is a kill condition pretty cool combination with the boros reckoner Vol volcano hellion of course it's got some cool draw card with survival cash i've always thought about putting survival cash in my um soul sisters deck it is pretty cool card advantage you get two life and a card and then it rebounds for another two life and a card so very good card advantage and yeah that's pretty much the gist of this deck i really like this combo i think that was very creative i'd love to test this out see how it works then we'll go on to the last deck. This one is Voodoo by Enix. And we'll pull it up here. 
So basically, this deck is just a curses deck. So he uses Curse of Misfortunes to go find his other curses, and he tries to kill you off by uh, Curse of Bloodletting and Curse of Pierced Heart. Actually, is really good together, and even even Curse of Thirst isn't bad in this deck. Let's pull it up here, see if it will actually. Uh, deals damage equal to number of curses attached to her. So you, you have the Pierced Heart, the Curse of Thirst, and the Curse of Bloodletting, and you'll be doing quite a bit of damage per turn. And you just grind them out that way. And then the Curse of Misfortune goes and gets the rest of them. kind of think that the Curse of Thirst might want to go up to a 2 of, but the most Misfortune can't go grab another card that you haven't, that you have in play. So you can go grab... I think that's why he wants to play so many of the Curse of Misfortunes. I think he has updated the deck since then. I'll have, to, I'll have to see what he's updated here. But then it's got a lot of control, of course. Just the basic Jund or Grixis type control cards in here with Searing Spears, Tragic Slips, Chip Hunger, Bar of Blood, Devil's Play, Dreadboard. So it works very good against the aggressive decks. Has tons and tons of interaction with it. And Rakdos Return can come in against the control decks and also the Key Rune. And the Staff and Inn are a nightmare for the control decks if you are able to resolve like a Staff and Inn. Anyway, this also has Olivia Voldaren, which can take over the mid-range game. So it's a pretty solid deck. It worked very good against the decks that I was playing. And you... I think that people underestimate how well this curse combination can actually be. It actually is a quick clock when he starts getting, like I said, the Curse of curse of Thirst and, and Curse of Bloodletting, Curse of Pierced Heart out. Anyway, those are the top eight submissions. You can go over to facebook.com slash rogue deck builder. I got a pull up that we can start voting on the semifinals. So you can vote up to four on Facebook. I'll pull up the Facebook page here and then I'll show you how it works. All right. So I got the Facebook page pulled up here. I got the poll here. And as you can see, it's got the top eight. So you can pick up to four of these. And those, the ones with the most votes will move on to the next round. You can also comment on this YouTube uh, video to comment on your favorite deck. And I'll include those into the poll, into the, the, the kind of the, the, the poll numbers at the end here. Or you can go to the Reddit page and actually vote there on the official um, top eight post that I just posted and that. So if you don't have a Facebook account, that's a way that you can actually participate. But I do encourage you to join the Facebook page page and come and vote here we actually have a great uh little group going we have almost 300 members on the facebook page a lot of discussion takes place on the facebook page so if you are a subscriber on youtube i i encourage you to come over to facebook and subscribe there as well so right now modern snakes is in the lead with two votes i just barely put this out so got a total of five so five votes right now and so come vote for your favorite deck and this they will move on to this the the semifinals and yeah